Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Perry High School, where today the Perry Commodores welcome in the Allen East Mustangs. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Jerry Snodgrass and our entire WOSN crew. Jerry, we take a look at this Saturday afternoon matchup. A neighborhood rivalry. These two schools separated by about seven miles. They used to be in the Northwest Conference. Perry's moved on to another conference, but a rivalry nonetheless. You know, you mentioned that as a rivalry, and going into tournament, we're on the last day of the regular season in Northwest, well, across the state for that matter, but you want that good rivalry game going into tournament. You know, win or lose, Absolutely. and I know every coach goes into it, they're going to win. But at the same time, you want to be tested going into that final, you know, final game, going into tournament time. So you're right, a good rival. And speaking of tournaments, you look at Allen East, kind of a, an up and down season, 11 and 10 on the regular season. This could be a big win for them going to the tournament. And you look at Perry, a disappointing season nonetheless. But if you get a win today, everything changes for tournament trail. You know, that's exactly right. Uh, Perry coming off a tough loss last night and lost their last four. But, you know, that's why, that's the beauty about coaching, I think, you know, in basketball. You might fail a test one night, but in 24 <laughs> hours, you get a chance to retake it. Absolutely. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups for the visitors for the Allen East Mustangs. They'll go number two, Ethan Young, is a 5'11 guard. He averages 12.8 a game. Number three, Carson Plum. He'd he's the leader of this team. 5'9 senior at 14.8 a game. Number four, Deacon Jones, is a 5'9 sophomore at 7.8 a game. Number 10, the big man, Logan Helser, 6'2", junior at nine points a game. And number 11, Brady Brooks, a 5'8", sophomore at 7.3 a game. The Mustangs come in at 11 and 10, 3 and 3 in the Northwest Conference. Offensively, they average 55.5 a game, and defensively, they give up 53.5 a game. For the Perry Commodores, they'll start number zero, Marcus Hill, a 5'7", sophomore at 9.6 a game. Number two, Zamir Daniel is a 6'3", post player. He's a senior at 12.9 a game. Number 10, Jason Thomas is a 6'3", senior at 5 Point one again. Number 12, Boz Harrison is a 5'6 junior. And number 22, Brady Shively, a 5'8 senior at 5.3 a game. The Commodores come in at 7-14, 5-4 in the Northwest Central Conference. Offensively, they give 44 a game and defensively 50.9 a game. So a nice crowd on hand, uh, Jerry. They, they, it's, it's good for us. They, they've moved this to a 2.30 start, which is kind of odd for us. We usually have to do Saturday night games, but both teams, girls, play tonight in sectional tournament action. Yeah, and you know, in my section of totally useless information. <laughs> we got know, a lot of that. Yeah, I, I look at a lot of the things that COVID created. Yes. And you know, when we were coaching in younger days and everything, we wouldn't have dreamt of playing on a Saturday. No. Night. There's <laughs> no way we're doing that. No, not a and chance. And now, you know, that caused people to, we'll play whenever we can play. Absolutely. So, you know, it's more common now, much more common. So the Commodores control the tip. Danny Hobrick, Jerry Snodgrass from Perry High School, the Commodores and the Allen East Mustangs. You know, I talked about Zamir Daniel, you know, in the, and before we opened, and, you know, right away they tried posting him up on the inside and take advantage of his jumping ability and good offensive abilities inside. So the Commodores missed the first shot. Here come the Mustangs. Three ball from the left corner on the way up, and it's good. Brady Brooks, the 5'8 sophomore, knocks in the jumper, and he makes it 3-0 on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. You know, he had 26 threes going into last night's game, and 33% shooter from the field, from outside the arc. So I've watched him a couple times this year, Jerry, and he gets going. He's a nice shooter from the outside. Yeah, I watched him in warm up, and he looked like, you know, just that good touch. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Critton Aerial Applications, provides you with custom liquid and granular crop applications, all from our innovative drone system. Videos and information on our Facebook page, Critton Aerial Applications. There's Brooks again from the top of the key. It was a heat check. He misses that one. Hill brings the ball down here, outlets it to Shively. Shively guarded by Brooks on the right side. They'll go back up top. That's where they'll reset it, and they'll get the ball back to Hill. You know, something I talk about all the time and when you talk about keys to a game, I've never gone a game where I don't say rebounding is a key to the game. And on that last one, even though Zamir Daniel did not get the rebound on that backside, he just checked out like you should. Yeah. I and mean, that was really impressive. And Zamir Daniel, when they post him up, he is a thick-bodied kid who can really jump in the paint. He does a nice job. There's a nice running jumper there by number 10, Jason Thomas, the 6'3 senior. He knocks it in, and it's 3-2 on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. There's a jumper from the outside, off the mark. That was Young. 
Young and Brooks will light you up from the outside. We've seen that all year long. Here come the Commodores. There's a dribble drive to the middle. Shot goes up. Rebound comes down to the Commodores. 6.05 to go here in the first quarter. Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass from Perry High School. You know, you mentioned that last time down, and that's one of my notes I wrote watching video on them is they love the three. Absolutely. There's Klum with a little runner there. Here come the Commodores. Hill brings it up the right side. He's going to spin move, go to the middle, and they're going to get a blocking foul. And are they going to say that shot falls in and, and they're going to count that? that? I, Bucket is good. They did count that. So a nice job there by Marcus Hill as he spins around Klum, goes to the rim, and he goes to the Jones excavating, or excuse me, the least famous recipe free throw line. We got a lot of sponsors here, Jerry. Yes, we do. <laughs> Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Hill just at averaging just under 10 a game. And that's one thing, they have pretty good balanced scoring. It's a nice matchup up top here with uh, Boss Harrison Garden Plum. Here's Brooks again. He'll kick it back out. Go to Young. Young dribble drives to the foul line. Back to Plum. Plum will go to the left side. Allen East being patient on the offensive end. This is Brooks, dribble drive baseline, kicks it back out. There's a steal, steal by Thomas. He's going to take it in, and he is going to hammer it home. Saw Jay that coming. Yes, you did. Jason Thomas, in the words of our good friend Aaron Matthews, boom shakalaka. 5.07 to go. Commodores lead 7-3 to three on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. Nice job getting the ball inside. And there you saw Helscher just missed the layup, and Jason Thomas rebounds it, but he does walk. Tried to get that outlet too quick, and yes, he did. I think he, well, I don't know who he was going to. I think it was to Zamir Daniel, but he wasn't looking, so I had to kind of reset and traveled as a result. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Road State College. Spring 2024 registration is now open. Road State College getting some great instant replays today. So the Mustangs will inbounds it underneath their basket. There's a three ball by Gabe Young. Nice rebound by Klum. Gets it back out to Brooks, and Brooks fires away. Rebound comes down to the Commodores. In the game now, Hunter Scott for the Commodores. Hunter Scott is a 6'2 junior, averages just under four points a game. When you look at him, and I was watching him during warm-up, too, has a lot of abilities. Good size, really good size. And, Jerry, you talked about the Commodores last night losing to Ridgemont and lost in a pretty big way. You know, these kids have a lot of pride, oh, and, and, yes. and Perry's going to play hard, I promise you that. And this is a rivalry game, and so far, they've looked really good here on the offensive end. You know, I used to you know, talk about that, and I would always tell people that, you know, you really want a learning experience, you know, like what coaches are able to do in 24 hours. Oh, absolutely. Jumper goes up, and it comes off the mark. I referred to Gabe Young, and that's the coach. Ethan Young is the yeah. player. <laughs> There's the rebound from Perry. Zamir Daniels gets the rebound, goes up. A lot of contact, no foul called. Here come the Mustang. Brooks outlets it, gets a Klum, rides him down the right side, misses the shot. He goes to the floor, bodies all over the floor. And here comes Shively as he brings it down the right side. You know, great pass, but I think it just caught him in the wrong you, yeah, stride. Yeah, you're absolutely you know, right. Going off the wrong foot, I think. Yeah, Marcus Hill with the jumper, and the rebound comes down to Allen East. And my goodness, this looks like a lake show from the 80s. I'm yes. telling you, both teams running up and down the floor. 3.24 to go here in the first quarter. Perry leads 7-3 to three on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. This is Young, or excuse me, this is Klum. Gets it inside to Helser. Little spin move, thought about taking it up. Nice cut by Klum yes. as he scores. Carson Klum, there you see it. And we've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Tonight's timeout sponsor is Spollinger Millwright. Services is proud to support the Allen East Mustangs. The team at SMS offers quality products from fabrication to installation. Located on Hanthorne Road and online at Spollinger.com. Spollinger Millwright is our timeout sponsor. 305, Jerry. Commodore's up 7-5. to five. So far, so good for the home team. You know, Carson Klum hit that last, you know, nice cut, nice lay-in. And 
I kind of thought, you know, you're watching his hands. I, I was so many videos I watched that he just had quick hands all the yeah, time. You're and absolutely right. I kind of said as as he goes, kind of so does Alan East go. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. Here's Brady Brooks with a little dribble drive, gets it to Klum. Klum jumper from the top of the key, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Samir Daniels, and there you see the ability of Samir Daniels to get in position to get that rebound. And we got a foul on the floor as. Desmond Cobb in now for the Commodores was going up for the shot, and they're going to get Carson Plum on the foul. Well, you know, in, in this short of a time, and especially with the pace of the game, I give the coaching staff for Perry, not that I don't for Allen East, sure. I do too, but for Perry, because all those shots, well, they boxing out well. Perry does. Yeah, absolutely. Nice jumper there by Hunter Scott. Goes off the mark, but the rebound comes down to the Commodores. They'll kick it back out. Andrew Nanshoff in the game now for the Commodores. And we thought he might start. Uh, yeah, you know, you're right. So he, he has started you know, some yep, this year. Got to get a lot of playing time, I think. Nice job there by Boz Harrison as he scores the bucket. And Perry stretches the lead to 9-5 to five with 2-12 to go in the first quarter. And if you're Perry and if you're the coaching staff of Perry, you're saying we needed this start. Absolutely. Here come the Mustangs. There's a nice dribble drive on the left wow. side. Deacon Jones, my goodness, he just goes through that defense and scores to make it 9-7 on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. And that's one of the things I noticed about Alan East. Now, he's averaging just under eight a game, but they all have some very, very balanced, very all are very capable scorers. Absolutely. Helser running the floor, and the ball goes out of bounds, but there you saw Helser, excuse me, going to the Grant Slusser, I'm sorry. As Slusser was going to the rim and uh, drops the ball out of bounds, and it'll go back to the Commodores. Boy, they're bringing kids yes, in and they out are. left and right. <laughs> Good thing we don't work for ESPN. Yeah, part of, yeah, part of that too, though, you know, played last night. You know, they were on the road last night. So, you know, there is a little fatigue factor there, especially when you're playing right, right away in the afternoon. Hunter Scott is a good-looking athlete here, Jerry. Yes. He dribble drives to the bucket there. Nice jumper. Yeah. There. Hunter Scott, little teardrop in, and he makes it 11-7 to on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. 1.17 to go here from Perry High School. Commodores with the ball, down 11 to 7. This is Carson Plum as he loses the ball, but they're going to say Marcus Hill fouled him on the floor. That's the first foul, I believe, on you're, you're Perry. You are absolutely right. We're a minute left in this quarter. Good crowd on hand today here at Perry High School for a 2.30 start. Actually got started a little before 2.30. Here come the Commodores. This is Young, guarded by Scott up top, down to 57 seconds in the first quarter. Nice cut by Brooks, but they're going to say Brooks traveled, yeah. and he moved that left foot just a little bit too much. You know, that, that, sometimes I think for players, I, that's a tough thing. You've got so much movement. Yeah. You're catching that ball on the run. You know, we used to always talk about jump stopping. Yes. You can't. <laughs> You're right. catching it on the run on those cuts, and, you know, you've got to be ready to shoot it when you get it. Sometimes it just catches you in the wrong foot. And you, you were right, Jerry. You did bring up a really good point. You know, we were talking about how happy we were that there was a 2.30 start, but these kids did play last yeah. night and didn't get home till late. So nice dribble drive there by number 21, Desmond Cobb. And the Commodores have stretched that lead to 13-7. to This is Brooks up top, guarded by Marcus Hill. Three ball from the left side, off the mark, and gets his own rebound, takes it back up, loses the ball. Rebound comes down to Slusser. His shot's blocked. And here comes Hunter Scott leading the break for the Commodores. Well, we talked about that, about the shot blocking ability for Perry. And nothing's easy on that inside. No, there's Jason Thomas, a little turnaround jumper. He misses that shot. We're down to 10 seconds in the first quarter. Here come the Mustangs. Keegan Jones in the game now. Swings it over. We're down to three seconds. Dribble drive. He loses the ball. And that's how the first quarter ends. So after one quarter of play from Perry High School, the Commodores lead the Allen East Mustangs 13 to 7. We'll have second quarter action right after these messages. three-point sponsor, R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all area athletes and go Mustangs. So after one quarter of play, Jerry, Perry's got it going on right now. They need 13 to yeah, 7. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, what a great start for them. Something they Absolutely. needed after last night's game. 
So they look really fresh and quick right now, and Alan East having a little bit of trouble with that quickness. So here come the Mustangs. Into the game now for the Mustangs. Number 23, Hunter Williams, a 6'3 freshman. I got to see him play earlier this year, Jerry, and a really bright future for this young man for the Mustangs. And this is him with a nice jumper from the outside. Klum gets the rebound. He'll kick it back to the middle. It's stolen. Here come the Commodores as they go down the right side. They'll go Jason Thomas on the right side. Jason Thomas runs the floor like a big man should, and he scores to make it 15 to 7 on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. And even there, you know, I think he was thinking dunk. <laughs> you know, because it excites the ground, but he knew better. He knew his, his footwork wasn't there. Gets there, a rebound now. Yeah, but he's playing hard, Jerry, right now, and Miller misses that shot. And Marcus Hill will grab the ball and set it up for the Commodores. It'll be 15 to 7 with 7 10 to go here in the second quarter. You're Allen East, too, though, and I realize it's only 15 7 early in the second quarter, but the speed of the game and how quick uh, Perry shoots, you're never out of it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Again, right, right. I know it's early, but you know, you have to kind of just take that if you're, you know, and be patient if you're Alan East. And a great job. Jason Thomas goes down on the low post and, and, and Olatande runs completely around him and he finds him for a nice pass. He just didn't get the shot he wanted, but there's Jason Thomas again, goes up again and almost scores, gets his own rebound and scores. Jason Thomas right yeah. now is playing harder than any player on the floor and the Commodores lead 17 to seven. He has eight points early in the early in the game here. So here come the Mustangs. 6:38 to go. Nice cut there by Helser as he scores, and the Mustangs cut the gap to 17-7 on the Critton Arrow scoreboard. And that was a good old-fashioned pick and roll. It was. We don't see that. No, often we don't. <laughs> Mainly because a lot of teams can't defend it. Right. <laughs> If you're big, can't defend it, you're in trouble. And, and you know, we say this in basketball all the time, but the game is not that complicated. Right. And what goes around comes around. <laughs> Sooner or later, it comes back and is used again. There you go. Helser gets one. down low. Back-to-back -back buckets by Logan Helser. And he's starting to flex his muscle a little bit. Makes it 17-11 on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. And Helser's got four. Shively with the ball on the left side, goes inside to Jason Thomas. Thomas, the leading scorer for the Commodores right now, finds a cutting Olatande, and he scores. Nice pass right there. And the Mustangs take a timeout with 5.47 to go. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Don't forget to check out our Stolly Hustle Award winner after the game. Check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award on the WOSN YouTube page. Stolly Insurance is the sponsor of the Stolly Hustle Award. Right now, the leading candidate has got to be Jason yeah, Thomas. Yeah, no kidding. He's really playing good basketball. Yeah, and we're not talking just on the scoring no. side. We're talking about rebounding. He made a great pass on that last score. And that's what I'm impressed with him on the offensive end. He can score, but his vision on the court to find yes. the open man. That's a good timeout by Alan East. Absolutely. I you know? No, I don't. Wait, he, Perry he took not, the timeout. Perry took yeah. the timeout. Yeah. But I'm sure Alan yeah. East didn't yeah. mind it. Here's Carson Klum, a little dribble drive. Gets it over to Helser. Helser goes back to Klum. This is Brooks on the left side, trying to get it inside to Miller, who's guarded by Jason Thomas. A nice matchup. There's Helser with the cut down the lane, and he loses the ball, but they're going to say it was last touch by the Commodores. That's the third time in the last probably five, six possessions yeah. where they've been able to dump it on it. When I say an easy drive, and he just lost the handle on it there. Yeah. And Helser starting at the high post and cutting right. down towards the basket. Here's Young with a little dribble drive. He takes the shot up, misses it. Rebound comes down to Samir Daniel. He's going to lead the break. What a luxury to have a 6-2 forward yeah. who can lead the break. He's going to take it in little turnaround jumper and it's off the mark rebound comes down to Carson Klum smallest player on the floor snags the rebound and he's going to lead the break for the Mustangs just under five minutes to go here until halftime you know by the way when I was looking at the statistics and everything else Carson Klum also leads their team in blocks <laughs> you're just talking <laughs> about him being the young, smallest guy on the court but they had a good shot that time Ethan Young knocks in the Jones excavating three-pointer, and he makes it 19-14 on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. So look at Alan East here, goes to a big zone, trying to slow down the Perry offense with 4.30 to go here until halftime. Shively with the ball up top. Carson Klum comes out on top. They'll swing it around. Good move by Alan East. I think they're going to say, well, you know, you've got to do this. Let's, you beat us on the jump shot outside. 
Here's Thomas with the ball up top. They'll swing it to Shively. Shively dribble drives baseline, kicks it back out. Finds Olatunde. Olatunde finds a cutting. Jason Thomas takes it inside, and he scores. Wow. Jason Thomas off balance score. Everything's falling for the young man. Yeah, and you know what? That came from a nice reversal. You usually yeah. see that reversal on the perimeter. He got it on the elbow. Absolutely. 21-14 on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. And here come the Allen East Mustangs trying to cut them in. This is the freshman Miller. He misses the fadeaway jumper. Rebound comes down to Jason Thomas. He's going to bring the ball all the way down. He's going to lose the ball, but there's going to be a foul on the floor. He's doing it all right now. I was just going to say, we may just like just say Jason, Jason Thomas, Thomas, and Jason Thomas. fill in the blank. <laughs> You have those games, Jerry, where you see a certain player get in his zone and yep. you know they're feeling really good about what – he's doing everything the right yep. way. He's hustling. He's working hard. He's really helping this offense. Yeah, you look at most of those baskets that he's gotten, you know, so far, and he's got 10 points, but he's earned every one of them. Absolutely. He'll kick it back out to Ola Tunde. Swing it to the right side. This is Cobb with the ball. Guarded up top by Deacon Jones. They'll swing it around to the left side, looking to get it into Thomas or Daniel. Daniel playing the high post. Jason Thomas playing down low. There's a steal by Brooks. Goes up the left side. Can't get the shot off. Great defense there yeah. by Olatunde as he gets down low. They'll go inside. They find a cutting slusser. He misses the little layup, and here come the Commodores. And again, they lose the ball. This is Brooks with the ball. Goes to the middle, a little teardrop. And rebound by Zamir Daniels. Here comes the Commodores. Back and forth we go. And Daniels is going to take it in himself. And there's going to be a foul on the shot. But, you know, you talk about, yeah, yes, those shots were missed. But, whoa, where we're sitting, you can see the hands that are deflecting yes, every one of those. Can. You're trying to adjust your shot to get it over those hands. So they're not just missing them. They're being caused. Those misses are being caused. Zamir Daniels will go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line with a chance to give Perry, a 22-14 lead. He misses that one. It'll stay at 21. Andrew Nanshoff and Hunter Scott check in for the Commodores. <laughs> a much-needed rest for Ola Tunde and Jason Thomas, who both of those young men have played outstanding basketball this half. So Daniels lets the second one fly, and he knocks it in to make it 22-14. Samir Daniels, the leading scorer for the Commodores at 12.9 a game. And that's his first point of the afternoon. And they're going to get a foul, and they're going to say Andrew Nanshoff bodies up on Deacon Jones. You know, and can't overemphasize it when I say this, but, you know, in high school sports and what we're dealing with within society today, by golly, I forget who it was for Perry there, just help him up. Yeah, you know, absolutely. like, hey, listen, you know. We're rivals, but. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> You're the, absolutely the, right. The game is bigger. Yeah. There's. Young tries to dribble dive, kicks it out. Brooks will go to the baseline. He'll kick it back out. Three ball from the left side. It's off the mark. Another big rebound by Daniels from Perry. He outlets it and almost threw it away, but it is corralled there by Desmond Cobb, and Cobb will reset the offense for the Commodores. And that's the challenge right now. You know, you, you're into a lot of dribble drive, but you dribble into traffic in there, and your only hope is to kick it out and hope you'll hit it. Absolutely. So we're down to 2.09 here until halftime. Commodores lead 22-14. Hunter Scott, little left-handed jumper, gets his own rebound. And Zamir Daniels corrals it and scores. Zamir Daniels, Johnny on the spot, and he gives the Commodores their biggest lead of the afternoon, 24-14. If you're Alan East sitting there like, you know, hey, it was just a loose ball. They just, just went the right it. way for, that, for uh, Perry. There's Young with a long three-pointer. Rebound comes down to Logan Helser. Helser gets it out to Brooks. Brooks thought about shooting the three, but he's going to back it off. He'll go baseline. He, the defense is really yeah. impressive right now from Perry. He also thought about going in the lane and changed his mind. Absolutely. So we get a foul out top beyond the arc, and I think they're going to get number 21, Desmond Cobb, on the foul. That's exactly who they got. That's his first foul of the afternoon. One thirty-one to go here from Perry High School. Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass, Perry and Allen East. Neighborhood rivalry. There's Logan Helser with a little fadeaway jumper. Rebound comes down to Slusser. He'll get it back to Young. Brooks dribble drives in the middle, takes it up. And he, no, he does not score, but he gets his own rebound. Ball just kind of popped into his hands. Young from the three line, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down Deacon Jones. That's the third attempt for the, for the Mustangs. And... 
Yeah, Frank Vince says we got a foul or we got a held ball on the play. Yeah. You know, but every one of those shots inside, again, you say, well, nothing's going in, but <laughs> you know, anybody that says that right. isn't in that paint. <laughs> Absolutely. That's great. <laughs> and seeing what they're facing. Yeah. So here comes Perry. They bring back in Olatanda and Jason Thomas, who really caused problems for the Mustangs. We're down to one minute to go here until halftime. Marcus Hill will reset the offense for the Commodores. He'll swing it to the right side. This is Nanshoff, guarded by Jones, trying to get the ball into Jason Thomas. They'll skip past it across the floor. Go back over to Nanshoff. Nanshoff tried to bounce past it inside to Zamir Daniels, and that ball goes awry, and the Mustangs will corral it and bring it down. Young dribble drives to the middle. A little, little circus shot that goes off the rim. Rebound comes down to Elser. He'll go back side to Brooks. Brooks dribble drives in the middle and he scores. Nice job there by Brady Brooks of getting to the rim and cutting that lead to 24-16 on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. And a much needed two-point basket. Huge, huge, absolutely. Much needed. Yeah. So Perry with the ball under 20 seconds to go. Let's see if they hold for the last shot here. And Marcus Hill tried to get it to Andrew Nanshoff and he throws it away. And the Mustangs have a real chance here of cutting the gap again. Really have to credit Brady Brooks on that one, you know, of getting that hand right in there. I, I don't know if he tipped that or not first. Yeah, they, they, they say that it goes back to Allen East, so Deacon Jones will bring the ball down. Guarded heavily there by Harrison. This is Brooks. Goes back to Young. Young three from the line. Off the mark. Rebound comes down, and they're going to say... I'm not real sure what the call is here. Oh, you know what? Hit the strap. Yeah, on okay, the... you're right. Yep. yep. Hit the strap. So nine tenths of a second to go here. Commodores will take it out underneath their basket. Jason Thomas will inbounds it, goes into Hill. Hill just throws it up, and that'll go off the mark. That's how it ends after one half a play from Perry High School. The Perry Commodores lead the Allen East Mustangs 24-16. We come back. We'll have second half action right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Perry High School, where after one half of play, as we start the third quarter, the Perry Commodores lead the Allen East Mustangs 24-16. Danny Holbrook and Jerry Snodgrass, excuse me there. Uh, Jerry, interesting first half, uh, low scoring first half. We had some really good defense. We had some good plays. We had some you know, guys on the floor, but just about everything you could ask for in a high school basketball game. Yeah, it really game. was. You know, you talk about it being a low-scoring game, but the pace was fast. Yes. And it just a lot of, when I say missed shots, a lot of missed shots because of the pressure inside. But you know something I think is going to be a little interesting? Okay, 24-16, eight-point lead right now. Halftime was extremely long. Yes, uh, yes. And by the way, congratulations to the Hall of Fame inductees Absolutely. here. Absolutely. A really cool thing they did. But with that lengthy halftime, um, I'm wondering, you know, how is that momentum broken sure. up now? Sure, You're absolutely right. And I, I think you brought a great point up that uh, Alan East was kind of shell-shocked by the aggressive style of play by Perry. And, you know, I want, I'm going to wonder if they're going to set some things up a little bit more to get perimeter shots. They've got some good three-point shooters. And not that they have to be from three-point, right. but, you know, to get a little bit better shot on the outside instead of driving into traffic. Or there's Helser with a shot, and it's blocked by Samir Daniel. Jason Thomas for Perry leads all scores. He's got 10 on the night. Uh, had a great first half, and for Allen East, Brady Brooks leads the Mustangs with seven. So we'll see if the Mustangs can't get back in this one. This is Brooks from the right side. Misses off the bounce. Here come the Commodores. They get it out. Let to Shively. Shively goes down the right side, guarded by Klum. Kicks it down to Jason Thomas. Left-handed layup. Misses that one. Thomas somehow gets his own rebound. Kicks it back to Shively. Ball almost stolen, and it goes out of bounds, and it's going to go back to Allen East. And there's Ethan Young's hands that got a finger on that to get it, you know, cause it to be bobbled and eventually kicked out of bounds by Perry. So here's Carson Klum. He's the leader for this team. It seems like Carson Klum has been an Allen. He's five, six years. <laughs> He's been, played a lot of basketball. There's a three-pointer. There you go. Carson Klum knocks in the triple. Our three-point sponsor tonight is Jones Excavating. Carson Klum it's that gap to 24-19. They try to go into Zamir Daniels. He loses the handle. Plum gets the loose ball, brings it down the right side, goes behind his back. They'll swing it around. This is Young with the ball, 6.54 to go. Commodore's down 24-19. Brooks with a nice spin move there. 
Tried to go inside. Little dribble out, drive foul line, kick it back out. This is Young. Long three-pointer. It goes off the mark. Marcus Hill grabs the rebound. He'll bring it down the middle of the floor for the Commodores. They lead 24-19. He's double teamed out top. Gets away from him. Finds Zamir Daniels, who misses the shot. Rebound comes down to Helser. Well, right now, Allen East doing what they need to do. Yeah, they're limiting Perry with one shot. And offensively, they're getting good looks, just not making it. There's Carson Klum with a nice drive to the bucket, but misses the shot. Rebound comes down to Zamir Daniels. And he gets it out to Marcus Hill, who set it up for the Commodores. Marcus Hill, an interesting uh, athlete, averages almost 10 a game. Yes. Uh, they need to get him on track. He's got three for the Commodores. This is Shively out top, goes to Jason Thomas. Shively three point from the left side, and he knocks it in. You know, I love to see shooters that, you know, they've got their feet. You, you can tell if he gets the ball, you can tell he's going to shoot. He's got his yeah. feet ready, stepping into that. He was nice waiting for that shot. one. There's yeah, a three-pointer nice on the shot. other end. Deacon Jones matches Brady Shively, and we got a shootout here at 27-22. And you saw Brady Shively come down the right side. He was waiting for the next shot. Yeah, Deacon, <laughs> he, you know, he's got 25 threes on the, uh, going into last night. I don't know what he had last night. Shively loses hand on the ball, throws it back in. Deacon Jones catches it, but he's going to be fouled by Jason Thomas. Inadvertent foul. Right. You feel bad for Thomas. He was just going for the ball. That's his first foul, so. 5.21 to go. That says a lot. Him, him rejecting shots on that inside like he's been doing, and that's his first foul. 5.21 to go. Perry leads 27-22. They led 24-16 at the half. There's a three ball from the right side, I, and it's yeah. good. Deacon Jones, my goodness, that's two in a row for that young man, and it's 27-24. Don't look now, but here come the Mustangs. You know, what a good-looking shot, too, and you know most of their scoring now, you know, again, staying out of that paint. There's Thomas, who finds a cutter to the basket. Ball goes up, and it's missed. Carson Plum gets the rebound. He's going to bring it down and outlets it. Here comes Young on the left side. Gets it over to Brady Brooks. Mustangs down by two. There's Young from the left side, and it's good. Yeah. Three in a row for the all Mustangs of a sudden. on a 9-0 run. Wow. <laughs> 4.41 to and go. all those shots coming from the perimeter. The Mustangs have taken a 28-27 lead. We'll be back right after these messages. Tonight's timeout sponsor is Spollinger Millwright. Services is proud to support the Allen East Mustangs. The team at SMS offers quality products from fabrication to installation. Located on Hanthorne Road and online at Spollinger.com. Don't forget to stick around after the game for our Stolly Hustle Award presented by Stolly Insurance. You can check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award on the WSN YouTube page. Go to the WSN YouTube page, Jerry. That's where I critique all my performances. Some good, <laughs> some bad. <laughs> I'm glad you do. I'm afraid to watch mine. I'll be. I'll go home with my wife. We'll be pulling them up on TV, and she'll be like, "You said this. You did this." So she's she's critiquing. 4:35 to go. Commodores trying to get the lead back, as they had the lead at halftime, 24-16. While we're waiting on that, you know, that reminds me of an our golden megaphone that I ran when I was in yes, Columbus. Yes, what a great thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I walked into Milford High School, and they all had fat heads of me. Okay, <laughs> and I'm really not into that. But when I left, they gave me a couple of them. That's My great. granddaughters wanted them for their Kool-Aid stand. I thought, how cool. <laughs> no, they drew all over them. They drew mustaches on me, drew glasses, you know, scars on me. Thought, oh, I so, love the granddaughters. So much for evaluating yourself, you know. <laughs> Zamir Daniels. I gets learned the, not to do it at that point. <laughs> Zamir Daniels gets the ball down low, and he is fouled on the take-up with 4.29 to go. He will go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. First one on the way, and it is good. Good looking shot there. Nice soft touch. Samir Daniels has four on the night. He averages right around 13 a game. He ties it up at 28-28 on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. The second one's on the way, and it's good. You're right, he does look comfortable from the line right yeah, now. Yeah, he does, and you know, really, you talk about how many points he had, you know, it just that he has five points, but oh, there's another one. Brady Brooks on the drive on the left side, uncontested as the Mustangs get it down the floor, and he scores to make it 30-29. There's Marcus Hill from beyond the arc. Samir Daniels with a big-time rebound, and he gets it again, takes it straight back up, and he scores. There's the strength of Samir there Daniels. There it is, and you know what? What a great little head fake there. 
you know, to get him, you know, get a little bit better shot on the inside. Got the rebound, put it back up. There's Carson Love. Mustangs down now, 31-30. Deacon Jones from the right side, and he knocks it in. Deacon Jones is on fire. Are you kidding me? Another three ball. He's got eight tonight, and it's 33-31 on the Critton Aerial scoreboard. I think they've done just that. I mean, I, it's hard to just design that, but hey, let's start taking that perimeter shot. We're going to shoot. You're knocking them in. You're absolutely right, Jerry. This is Marcus Hill with the ball up top. Almost a near steal by Deacon Jones. They've, and, and to Perry, they've almost went away a little bit from Jason Thomas, who pretty much owned yeah. the inside in the first half. Here's Harrison. He loses the ball. Deacon Jones brings it down the middle. He's guarded by Harrison and Shively, and they're going to get a foul out top. You know, there's something that guards do so well is, you know, he drew that foul. Yes. You know, he knew he was probably going to be contested going into that layup. So, hey, listen, I'll draw the foul, you know, possibly get the shot up. You fouled him beforehand, but great job by a guard to do that. Commodores will bring in Hunter Scott, and uh, Jason Thomas will take a seat. Here's Brooks with the dribble drive, or excuse me, Young with the drive, and he misses that shot and corrals the rebound, but it goes out of bounds, and it'll go back to the Commodores. Yeah, that might have been their ball in the first place. I think you're saying. right. I think you're right, yeah. Easy to say, though. It was, it was, it's the farthest point from where we're sitting. Well, that's how we, that's how we, everybody officiates. <laughs> that's right. Here come no, the I don't meet the officials either. Cobb it's with the, the stands. Ball. In for the Commodores. They'll swing it over to Marcus Hill. Marcus Hill gets it to Shively. Shively trying to get it inside. Hunter Scott in the middle. There goes Zamir Daniels on the low post. Daniels takes a little turnaround jumper, misses that shot. Rebound comes down. Daniels gets his own rebound. Hunter Scott, left-handed 15-footer, and he knocks it in. Hunter Scott looks yeah. smooth with that he jumper. He sure is, left-handed like that. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the challenges you have when you go zone, you know, because they were in a zone. That, rebounding, um, you're right. Yeah, yeah, rebounding is a tougher thing in a zone. Yeah. There's Clum. There's another him long open. three ball. Misses the shot. Deacon Jones with a heat check as he knocked in a couple from the same spot. Here comes Marcus Hill as he goes in and he draws the foul. Nice play by Marcus Hill. Yeah, it was. And you know, that, that's they're going to try to do a lot more of that in transition, I think. Absolutely. So Marcus Hill will go to the free throw line. Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. We're watching one of the officials kind of trying to get uh, encouraged to make a couple calls in. We saw. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard it put that way. They're being encouraging to yeah. the officials, yeah. the fans. But, uh, that, you know, I, it's good to see him. We saw him before the game, Frank yeah. Vitt. Yes. Coming up. And that's one of the great things, you know, about officials that, you know, will make this trip this yes. far north, you know, to, to call a game. And truly, truly doing it for the benefit of basketball and the kids. I, you know, I know they take grief and all oh, that other stuff, but I, at the I same time. I couldn't do it, Jerry. I no, couldn't do it. No, no. <laughs> but he's doing it for one reason. Yep, you're absolutely right. Probably spent more in gas and then he does uh, the game buying check. a you're burger right. on the way yeah. home than... Here's Brooks from way beyond the arc. He misses that one. Jason Thomas with a big-time rebound. He'll outlet it to Cobb. Cobb will go down the right side of the floor. Gets it over to Hunter Scott. Cobb with a jumper from the left side. Misses off the bounce. Carson Plum will lead the break for the Mustangs. They're down 36-33. 1.56 to go in this one until fourth quarter. And there's a foul out top. Right now, Allen East, the Mustangs are getting the shots they want. They're getting that good, fairly open perimeter shot. And that opens up the inside eventually. Absolutely right. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Road State College. Spring 2024 registration is now open. So here's Young. He'll dribble drive right side, gets it over to Carson Plum. Plum gets it to Deacon Jones. Deacon Jones has been on fire. This is Jones on the right side. Little dribble drive, baseline, kick it back out. Allen East, very patient right yeah. now with their offense. Keegan Jones in the ball game now for the Mustangs. They'll kick it to the corner. This is Keegan Jones. Ball gets knocked loose. Marcus Hill gets the loose ball. He brings it down the floor, breaking for the Commodores. Tries to go inside, and they're going to get a foul on the floor. And they got Deacon Jones on the foul. One seventeen to go here. Fast-paced game, moving along really quick here. You're right. Long halftime, but it doesn't seem to affect. No, it doesn't. Team. I, I was curious how it would. I don't think that run by Allen East to uh, when they went ahead. I, 
I don't think that was due to that. Right. I, you know, on anything on Perry at all. It was just some good shooting. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Marcus Hill will bring the ball in for the Commodores. We're down to 110 to go here in the third quarter. Samir Daniels lifts one up from beyond the arc, misses the shot. Rebound comes down, corralled by Ethan Young. He'll bring it down for the Mustangs with just at a minute to go in the third quarter. 36-33. And I don't think it's any failure on Perry to do this, but I don't know how many times Jason Thomas has touched the ball this quarter. You're absolutely right. I, I mentioned that earlier. They haven't gotten involved in much. There's a steal by the Commodores. They'll outlet it, and they throw it away, and Brady Brooks will go grab it for the Mustangs, and an opportunity for the Commodores. Here come the Mustangs, a little 12-footer in the middle. Oh, tough shot. And he knocks it in, Deacon Jones. And I go back to that. I don't think it's any fault of Perry. I think it's just that the... You know, Alan East has done a good job of taking away Thomas in the inside. We're down to 23 seconds here. Perry leads 36-35. Coach Nolte has told his kids we're going to hold for the last shot. Alan East sitting back in a big zone. We're down to 10 seconds. This is Marcus Hill with the ball. Swings it across. And down to six. We're at four. Dribble drives to the middle, a little spin, and they're going to get a foul, or they're going to get a travel call with five tenths of a second. So, wasted opportunity by the Commodores. They'll bring Andrew Nanchoff back into the game. Even though that was a little different, you know, when I say this, but I, I with a Euro step today, I don't know how you could ever call traveling anymore. It's hard. It's, it really, I, really is. I mean, yep. is it or isn't it? I, <laughs> You're right. You're right. So Alan East will uh, football pass down the floor, and that's how the third quarter ends. So after three quarters of play from Perry High School, the Perry Commodores own a one-point advantage at 36-35. We'll have fourth quarter action right after these messages. Back here at the start of the fourth quarter from Perry High School. Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass, the Perry Commodores and the Allen East Mustangs are just in a good one here on a Saturday afternoon. 36-35, Commodores lead after three quarters of play. Well, the Mustangs, you know, went on a 9-0 run early in that quarter and, you know, cut that lead by seven, you know, nice going into this fourth quarter. Absolutely. Yes. So you can Did tell exactly what they wanted to do at halftime. Scoring's down a little bit, but we talked about that earlier. Both of these teams lost last night, uh, played late night games. So here we are at a two, about a 220 tip, really. They said 230. They started a little early, but uh, both teams have played well and uh, good old fashioned rivalry game here at these Allen County schools. Yeah, as you mentioned, both used to be league, you know, league opponents and league rivals, and glad they're still playing it. Absolutely. This is Hunter Scott. He'll kick it back to Jason Thomas. There's a three ball on the way. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Mustangs. That was Ola Tunde, who had a really nice first half with Jason Thomas. And the, or the, excuse me, the Mustangs here look to take the lead. Carson Plum, dribble drive on the right side, just misses the shot, got through the defense. Here comes Jason Thomas leading the break, takes the shot up, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down to the freshman. And he's hurt. And Jason Thomas is hurt, and he is grabbing his knee. And the Mustangs score, and they're going to stop play. And he is absolutely hurt as he's holding that leg. And he's going to get up and try to walk it off. Let's hope that young man is okay. You know, I, th I think that possession there, you know, sometimes you, you, you want to get, you, granted, they were still ahead, but, you know, they want to kind of set that momentum. They go a little too fast. Yeah, and Thomas looks like he's going to be okay. He's going to have to take a seat. Yeah. But he is walking on his own power. So nice gesture yes, there by Deacon exactly Jones. Right. Yeah. Deacon Jones from Allen East come over and ask him if he was okay. And I love to see that. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, today in today's world, they all know each other. These, you know? Yeah, I was gonna say, these kids play summer basketball yeah. and you know. I remember a kid coming home one of my games in the early nineties and said he talked to one of our opponents after the game. He said, How'd you talk to him? Uh, <laughs> I am instant message. Instant message. Like, <laughs> what? Right. What are you talking about? It ain't like our day, Jerry. No. Nope. <laughs> Here's Marcus Hill with the ball. He'll go Shively in the corner. Shively double team tries to skip past it across. Ball gets loose. Olatandi corrals it. Shot goes up. Off the mark. Rebound by the freshman Miller. He'll bring it down and get it to Carson Plum. Well, you know, you have to credit the Mustangs because they've really forced a lot of errant shots. They forced a lot of quick shots, a lot of off-balance shots. And I, and I referred to him as Miller. It is Hunter Williams. I apologize for that. This is Williams from the outside. And the shot goes off the mark. 
and it goes out of bounds. Six twenty-six to go. Allen East leads 37-36. Olatunde will take a seat, as will Desmond Cobb. Young thought about pulling the trigger on that yes, one. Yes, he did. Carson Clark. So did he. <laughs> Everybody wants to shoot that three shot. But that's, they've been a lot more patient this half. I think yeah. that's something that, you know, they've really talked about at halftime. We don't need to go in the, into the traffic. Let's just be patient and get a good open shot. This is Brooks from the outside. He misses that Ooh. shot. Rebound comes down to Williams. He's going to try to take it back up. And it looks like they're going to get a foul underneath the basket. And that will go against Shively for the Commodores. I know. Coach, and I'm watching Coach Nolte there. I, you know, motion into his head. And it, it looked like he almost took his head off on that one. I just, I, I don't think they could see it where it was at. 5.56 to go. Allen East leads 37-36 in this back and forth affair here from Perry High School. Carson Klum will trigger the ball in. He finds a cutting Logan Hauser and he misses the shot, but Williams grabs the rebound and gets it to Carson Klum. Williams says, you know what? I'll take the shot and misses that one. Jason Thomas grabs the rebound. He's going to lead the break down the middle of the floor. And he cuts to the basket and slips no on the floor. And the ball rolls over to Jerry and I. And then we'll go back to Allen East. Unfortunate job because he got to the yeah. rim and he just slipped. Well, he took such a sharp angle there yeah. that you know feet just went right out from under him. You really get a sense right now. I've gotten a sense in the last couple of minutes that, you know, Allen East really confident right now. They really You're absolutely right. You know, yeah, it's only a one-point lead, but They've got all the confidence right now. This is Klum with the ball. Guarded out top by Harrison. He'll go to the corner. 5.28 to go. Mustangs lead by one, 37-36. See, previously, they would have driven that in there and gotten it rejected. You're absolutely right. And they, they've been very patient on their shot selection. This is Ethan Young with the ball guarded by Zamir Daniels, and he throws the ball away, and it goes out of bounds. Almost go back to the Commodores. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing I saw as I thought he was going to get it. It's been, a, you know, Jerry. You talk about good sportsmanship. You know, all the officials came up and spoke to us, yes, and introduced they did. themselves, yep. and just a really nice group of guys. And and a lot of these kids have come up. And I, I said earlier, everybody comes and talks to you. So yeah, what, a, what a great crowd! Yeah. High school basketball is the best in Northwest Ohio. It, it is. It, it is, is, is the best. Here come the Commodores. That's Shively in the middle. Gets it over to Marcus Hill. Shively thought about taking the jumper, and he does, and he goes off the mark. What a rebound by Jason Thomas as he was above the rim and misses the shot. I almost feel like he can better serve to come yeah, down with the ball. Yeah, it could yeah. be really nobody was around him. There you see the athleticism of Jason Thomas with a big-time rebound. Williams gets it over to Klum. They'll go back to Brooks, and, yeah, we got a foul out top. And we're going to get a foul on Marcus Hill. As he kind of pushed off Williams on that yeah. screen. And it's amazing, you know, and I, I think sometimes this comes from playing last night, especially the right. gap in there is, you know, it's easy for me to say that, but you just see a totally different Allen East team on the court. Right You're now. absolutely right. You'll see that foul on our Road State instant replay. This is Helser with the ball out top. There's the Klum. Brady Brooks with a long three-pointer, and he knocks it in. Brady Brooks gives the Mustangs the 40-36 lead, the biggest lead of the night for the Mustangs. Brady Brooks has 14 to lead the Mustangs. Jason Thomas finds a cutter to the basket, misses that shot, and he had Harrison going to the rim, and he just misses it. So the Mustangs have a chance to extend that four-point lead with just at the four-minute mark. This is Williams with the ball. Looks at Klum. This is Young on the right side of the floor. Totally different on the patience. Here's Young with a long three-pointer off the mark. Marcus Hill grabs that one, grabs his leg. It yes. looks like he's hurt, right. and he's going to need to get the ball to somebody else. And the official recognizes that, and a good move by the yep. official. Yeah, he went down and grabbed his leg. He's coming off the floor. I think he got need or... Yeah, I, I don't think it's anything serious, but you can tell right. it did affect him. So they'll bring uh, Desmond Cobb in the game for Marcus Hill. And right there, something I try to say every game, the trainers. 
The oh, unknown invaluable. people right there. Invaluable. I remember the day when you didn't have to have a trainer in the building. Yes. 38 to go. Mustangs lead. Nice cut and a bucket. Harrison scores, and the Commodores take a timeout. 40-38 with 3.32 to play. We'll be back after these messages. Welcome back to Perry High School, where the Perry Commodores just scored a bucket to close the gap at 40-38. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Road State College. Spring 2024 registration is now open. Hey, you know, Dan, I got to tell you something. I advise students. I'm a success coach at a community college. And students, you know, in this area, you want a good deal. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. And you'll start looking at tuition rates, things like that. And, and listen, I, I work at one, and I know what a great deal that is. So, hey, a little extra. A little plug, plug there, there for Road State. State. Yep. That's right. Yep. Absolutely. I'm sure they'll send the check in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 3.32 to go. Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass. Always a great time to get to do a game with Jerry. Jerry, everybody on the looks at the WSN list and wants to work with Jerry Snodgrass. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> hey, I look at it, too, and I look forward to working it because I just love Northwest Ohio basketball. Love what WOSN does for the communities. We, uh, we put out a good product, and I'm really proud to be part of this organization. Here come the Mustangs. This is Klum as he skip passes across. There Another long three-pointer off the mark. Carson Klum brings in the rebound, gets it to Young, who misses the shot. And a lot of action underneath the basket, and it's going to go back to the Commodores. Yeah, you talk about these communities and stuff like that. I mentioned this last night in the Elida game. I'm pulling into Elida, you know, off Beatty Road, yes, there, yes, yes. Road, and I see the water tank. And it's got the Elida Bulldogs yes, on it. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm just telling you, you don't see that in other parts no, of the state. Right. So we take that for granted. What a good Brady shot. Brady Shively knocks in the triple. Are you kidding me? Brady Shively gives the Commodores the 41-40 lead. Here come the Mustangs. They try to get the lead back. 2.48 to go. Back and forth we go in this Allen County rivalry. Ball's on the floor. It's corralled by Klum. Klum gets it over to the left side. They'll go back to Klum. 2.38 to go, gets it inside to Helser. His defender fell down and Helser scores wow. off the bank. Helser knocks it in to make it 42-41 for the Mustangs. That's a big bucket, you know, after Perry bucket. just went ahead. You're absolutely right. They'll go Jason Thomas down low on the block. Samir Daniels gets it. Three ball from the left side, off the mark. A rebound comes down to Thomas. He almost falls down, corrals the ball. Gets it over, and everybody on the floor here. And the Mustangs get the loose ball with 2.04 to go. Boy, almost a, just a helter-skelter yeah, matchup and there. Yep, and you that's what caused the turnover. You're absolutely right. 154 to go. Mustangs lead 42-41. And they're yep, going to get gonna a see foul. That. Did you see? I did not see the foul, Jerry. I, I think, yeah, I saw it just, just briefly, but... You're seeing that a lot. You know, you're seeing, I think, the focus being on those off-ball screens. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A little push here and there. Uh, when I was coaching, I think all our players probably would have been fouled out because we did, <laughs> we did so many off-ball screens and tried to teach it properly, you know. But, you know, done. It's, it's hard not to foul, not to hold. Here come the Commodores. Nice dribble drive to the basket, yeah. and he there scores. Cobb knocks it in to give the Commodores the 43-42. Another lead change, about the fourth one in the last minute and a half. Here comes Carson Klum, takes it inside, misses the shot, and he wanted the foul. Zamir Daniels gets the rebound, and they're going to get Carson Klum on the foul. You know, it's so tough, I think, in games like this that have been so physical up and down the court. It just, it's just hard to call everything. I, that's I, right. That's, yeah. that's not a criti criticism of the officials or supporting it. It just, I think it's a very, this is a very tough game to officiate, put it that way. You're darned if you do, and you're, you're darned if you do. Right. 127 to go. Commodores lead 43 42. And they're going to take a timeout. With 1.24 to go, we're going to step aside. You're watching High School Basketball on WSI. Welcome back to Perry High School. 
where with 124 to go, the Perry Commodores lead 43-42. Don't forget to stick around for our Stolly Hustle Award presented by Stolly Insurance. You can check out the highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award on the WSN YouTube page. Stolly Hustle presented by Stolly Insurance. Why can't one guy just have 40 on a night to make the Stolly <laughs> right? a little easier? I'm looking at the scoreboard, I'm looking at the stats, and I've got seven or eight different players yeah. who are all worthy of the award. And not only that, but you know, sometimes, you know, People think probably Roy selecting somebody to high score or something like that. That isn't at all. No, I mean, that's certainly that's what everybody sees, and that's what wins games. But, you know, still, there's a lot of players on the floor all night or all day that have just done a great job hustling. Everybody can't be the leading scorer. You're absolutely right, Jerry. 124 to go. Jason Thomas will inbounds in front of the Perry bench. And he'll get it inside to Shively, a dangerous pass. Yeah, I, I was a little wondering. <laughs> you and I both looked at each other like, wow, I can't believe he passed that. But he gets it in. Ah, they're spreading it out. They're going to make yep. him come out and get him. This is Marcus Hill as he dribble drives foul line. And he's got a cutter to the rim. And they lose the basketball. Cobb loses the ball. And here come the Mustangs with 105 to go. A huge mistake by the Commodores. And the Mustangs are going to try to capitalize on it. And they have four timeouts left. By the way, both teams have fouls to burn. That's There's Brooks' long three-pointer, and a huge rebound by Jason Thomas. Gets it over to Zamir Daniels, and the Commodores bring the ball down the floor. This is Cobb, and he splits the double team, and they're going to get a foul. And it probably gonna, looks like Deacon Jones on the foul, or Brady Brooks. No, they're going to get Deacon Jones on the foul. 43 seconds to yeah, go. Yeah, you know, that becomes critical now, too, because, you know, uh, Alan East has three fouls right now, so they've got a foul to burn yet. You like that Two fouls. rule, Jerry? I, I don't know yet. Yeah, you're, I, that's I don't exactly, know. You're I exactly really right. don't. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious what impact. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, well, let's wait until tournament time. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So Hunter Scott with the inbounds for the Commodores. And he gets it. No, he throws it away, and the Mustangs steal yep, it. Held him. And yep. we're going to get a foul. Marcus Hill and basically had to hold him so they would yeah. not get an easy bucket. Probably a good foul. You're absolutely of, right. You know, that's only their third. I and thought, that, yeah. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, well, that's the part of it. You know, like, I, I, I don't know if I'd like, you know, all these fouls to give at the end of the game right. to determine, you know, to, how they're being used, how those fouls are being used. So let's see how this plays out with 41 seconds to go. Alan East inbounds the ball, and it's knocked Same out of way. bounds. Yeah. But I'll tell you, Jerry, you know, we talked about all the, the, the competitiveness in this game and a lot of guys being on the floor and some rough physical play. These officials have handled this game they really, sure really well. They sure have. So that ball goes out of bounds. Perry doing a great job of causing problems for Alan East to inbounding the ball. They're going to put Marcus Hill on the ball, and Frank Vitt saying something to Marcus Hill, maybe saying he can't come across that line or touch that ball. They get it in bounds. This is Helser with the ball. We're down to 37 seconds. This is Young, guarded by Jason Thomas. Deacon Jones with the ball, back to Young. Young over to Carson Plum. We're down to 28 seconds. Young with the ball on the right side. Still a lot of time, so I... Carson Plum tries to dribble in. He loses the ball, but he somehow gets the ball, but I think he was on the end line. Who are they and giving it to? I'm not real sure. The officials are discussing it. And it looks like it's going to go back to Allen East. I couldn't tell from our vantage point, but we're going to get a timeout with 20 seconds to go. We'll step aside. The Allen East Mustangs, Perry Commodores. What a battle. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Perry High School with 20.9 seconds to go. We've got a dandy. The Perry Commodores lead 43-42. A low-scoring affair, but the competitiveness in this game, Jerry, has been outstanding. It sure has been. You know, what a way to end your regular season. Alan East is going to trigger the ball underneath their basket. Brooks is the trigger man. Gets it into Carson Klum. Carson Klum thought about shooting it. He's going to kick it out top. This is Young, guarded by everybody. Long three-pointer. It's good! Woo! My goodness, are you kidding me? Brady Brooks knocks in the three, and the Perry Commodores are going to take a timeout. They're down 43-45. We're going to step aside for our final timeout. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN.
welcome back to Perry High School where Brady Brooks of the Allen East Mustangs just he was in the stands, Jerry. Yes, he, he was. He nails a huge three-pointer for the Allen East Mustangs. That young man has had a heck of a game. He's got 17. Yeah, didn't hesitate, you know, and had, you know, just focus on it. Feet were set. Seven seconds to go, Jerry. You're, you're playing on your home court. You winning the game or are you going for overtime? I, I go for overtime. I just yep, do. That's I a, just do. Yep, you're I, right. I, I have enough confidence if I'm a coach that, you know, if we can just get it there, we're going to win. Hunter Scott's going to trigger the ball in with seven seconds to go. Zamir Daniel on the low post. Marcus Hill will cut across the screen. This is Hill with the ball. Tries to go dribble drive, and he loses the ball, and it's corralled by the Mustangs. It's two seconds to go, and I don't know what happened. They just stopped playing, and they fouled him with seven-tenths of a second to go. I think they all thought, you know, he got fouled. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Marcus Hill thought he was fouled on the play. And all Allen East has to do is get the ball in bounds right now with seven tenths of a second to go. Why well, I, you know, we've both been in situations like this, and I just think of a coach, you know, like you just, man, you know, you need this win yeah. so bad, and You're the emotions right. that go with this. Allen East trying to trigger Whoa. the ball in. If they can get it, they get it inside, and the foul is made, and that's going to do it. They don't foul in time. The Allen East Mustangs win 45 to 43. We'll wrap this one up right after these messages. Back here at Perry High School, wrapping this one up, the Allen East Mustangs get a hard fought 45 43 win. Brady Brooks, fantastic on the wow. afternoon, Jerry. Yeah, you know, but with that, you know, being the game winner, there were two spots in this game that I thought just totally turned it around. One was the 9 0 run coming out second yes, half yes. Uh, early in the third quarter, you know, that put them back up 28 27. There was another one about 4 25 in the fourth quarter where they went on a little bit of a run and took a 40 36 lead. And I think that just changed the momentum. And I talked about the confidence they had. You're absolutely right. And Brady Brooks is our Stolly Hustle Award winner. Stolly Insurance is our sponsor. You can check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award on the WOSN YouTube page. So a hard fought victory for the Allen East Mustangs, taking nothing away from Perry. A good, good game for them to take into the tournament trail. Yes, it is. And you know, that's what you want at this time of the year. And I will say this from a coach's standpoint, you know, how tough it is for a team like, you know, uh, like Perry you know, coming off a few losses, they needed this win tonight going in the tournament, and now you're playing totally with the emotions of getting those kids back. That'll do it from Perry High School, the Allen East Mustangs, a hard-fought 45-43 victory for Megan Sherry, Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Danny Holbrook, and our entire WSN crew saying we'll see you next week for high school basketball.